this is Stephen Demari, and today we are going to build a test circuit to show how to use a fuse and also show how it can protect your circuit from a short circuit or an overcurrent condition. So now I've gathered a few parts here so I'm going to tell all the materials that we're going to use today. So I've got a battery holder here, I've got four AA batteries to put in the battery holder. I've got my knife blade switch. I have a fuse. I have what are called two fuse pigtails which I was able to purchase recently which is very handy for mounting the fuse on my solderless breadboard. I also have a few electrical jumpers and then I've got a part that I haven't covered in my courses yet but this is a light emitting diode and we have a resistor here and it's red red brown gold so that is 220 and that's 220 ohms plus or minus 5% and this is my solderless breadboard and I've put these components on a board you can see I've used some screws and I put some screws to secure the knife switch as well as the battery holder. So now we're going to get started assembling our circuit and I'm going to leave putting in the batteries the very last. So first what we're going to do is we're going to install the fuse. So I've got this fuse here and my two pigtails so all I have to do is insert the fuse by giving it a, a turning motion to put it inside and get the second pigtail and with the turning motion and then I want them to be even and then I'm going to put this on my solderless breadboard. Now I'm, I want one end of my fuse to go to this plus terminal which runs all the way down on this side here and then the other one I'm going to put in my first row here. So now I've got my fuse and I forgot to mention this fuse is a quarter amp or 250 milliamps a quarter amp fuse that's what the size of this fuse is and the fuse element the thin wire is so thin it's quite hard to see through the glass there but it is there. Now next I'm going to take the conductors from my battery holder and I've labeled I've put some red tape to show the positive so I'm going to put my positive to the fuse so I'm connecting my positive to the fuse and then negative which I put black tape to signify my negative lead I'm putting on this negative terminal here and there's conductors one conductor running down here so I can use any point here as my negative and I can use any point here as my positive because this is all one continuous conductor with spring conductors in each hole. Now next I'm going to um, insert my diode, my light emitting diode, and we'll be covering this in one of the next courses so very soon. So I'm going to insert it here. So I'm going to put one, the one lead is negative and this is the positive side. I'm going to put there and then my 220 ohm resistor I'm going to connect to the LED on one side okay and I need a jumper because I need to go I need my positive hooked up to the resistor there so now I've made a circuit now I've repositioned things here so you can see the complete circuit and I'm going to hook up the batteries and demonstrate how the current flows 
I've got to make sure to put the batteries in in the correct polarity. To watch and see how the markings are. And you can see putting them in opposite direction. Usually negative is on the end. So now you see I've put the battery in and my LED is lit. And so if we're following conventional current flow, my positive lead is connected here. So positive current flow is going through the fuse, down the positive bus rail, through the gray wire, through our resistor, through the LED, causing the LED to light and then back to the negative lead if we're looking at conventional positive current flow. Now I'm going to just disconnect one battery for a moment to shut the circuit off and I'm going to put in a short circuit. I'm going to wire a short circuit in with my switch so that I can make a short circuit to across the batteries. Just use my screwdriver. Connect one wire across the negative bus and the second wire across the positive bus. And then I got to put this wire to the other switch terminal. tricky to hold there. Okay, so now you can see I've wired up two wires across the switch and across the negative and the positive of the battery, which is in series with the fuse. So what will happen is when I close this switch, right now my battery is disconnected, when I close this switch it will cause a short circuit. The current will flow through the fuse, through my short circuit, across the batteries, and that will make the fuse blow. But before I demonstrate blowing the fuse by throwing the switch, I'm going to also put in a current meter, an ammeter, so we can observe how much current flows. Now we have to remember this is a one quarter amp or 250 milliamp fuse. And so we're going to observe how much current flows with our meter at the time of the short circuit. And we'll also observe the current that's flowing through the LED before the short circuit occurs. So I'm going to modify the circuit to add my meter into the circuit. So I'm going to shift this over to make some room for my meter so we can see the meter. If we can get the meter in there. Shift it over a bit more so you can still see the switch basically. And in order to get a current reading I have to put my meter in series with the circuit, so in series with the fuse. So I'm going to hook my meter lead, the positive of my meter lead to the positive of the battery. So I'm just going to remove it from there. So I'm just going to clamp that. There, I've clamped the positive lead with the positive lead of the meter. And I'm going to put my negative lead of the meter to the fuse so that the current will flow through the meter 
And now I'm going to connect my battery so that the LED should light and then we'll see what current we have. Okay, so now my LED is light and we're reading on amps. We've got 0 0.017 amps, so that's 17 milliamps. And now I am going to close the switch. But maybe before we close the switch, I'm going to put something black behind the fuse so that we might be able to see a little easier when it blows. Also I'm going to put my recording on for the maximum current. That way we'll be able to look on the meter to see what the highest current is when the fuse blows. Okay, now we're going to demonstrate the fuse blowing. And my meter is recording. It's showing that the maximum current so far is 18 milliamps through the LED, well through the resistor and through the LED. And now I'm going to throw the switch and you have to watch carefully to see the fuse as it blows. It'll be very fast and it's not sure we'll see anything, but we'll find out. So here I'm just going to put my hand there and I'm going to throw the switch. So here goes the switch and it's going to happen quickly. Oh, yep. Yeah. So you saw that there was a little bit of a bright light there as the fuse blew and the meter recorded 0 0.409 amps. So that's 409 milliamps, so that's a lot more than 250 milliamps, but not double. And that's very common for a fuse to, when it blows, it allows a much larger current than its rating. But that's normal for a fuse, but that's still good protection for our circuit. So that's the end of our fuse blowing lesson and that's how fuses work. Now if I put my meter back to the normal reading, now that the fuse is blowing, you see that the LED is out, so when the fuse is blowing it's open, so no current flows, and we're reading zero amps on the meter. That's the end of our fuse blowing lesson. And another thing that's important to no, is before we replace the fuse we have to get rid of our short. So if I open the switch and then if I replace this fuse the LED would work again. So goodbye for now and we'll see you in the next lesson.